fe Just telling me about the two songs you performed, um, what each of them's called, a little bit about them, what they're about, you know, how you came to write them. Uh, um, the first song was Bonds, and um, I played that because that's the latest single. And, um, I don't know actually, I don't know, what, I don't know what, what any of this, I don't know Bonds, I don't know what that's about actually. That was just, um, that was written quite quickly. So, um, I don't, it was just mucking around with a couple of chords and it's all, it's a, it's all a bit nonsense really. Um, and the second song is a very new song called Dear English Reserve and I wanted to write a, a massive song. Uh, it might not have come across massive than that in that form. Uh, so maybe it did, maybe it did come across a but, um, but I just uh, wanted to write something quite big. Match as big as I get. I, t I take it you've re recorded that then? Uh, no, not yet. Not yet? No. So it will, it will probably sound bigger when, once you actually get around to yeah. laying it down? Yeah, but yeah, I can't, I can't go over the top. Right. don't want the tendency, it's quite, a, it'd be quite tempting to um, put a massive male choir in and uh, have a goal in it. I probably will have a goal in it, but um, no. <laughs> it won't be too big. It won't be too big. Um, obviously, you, I, I know that you're, you're a singer-songwriter and you do do a fair bit of acoustic stuff. Um, I don't know, have you ever taken a live band out on the road with you? Uh, a band? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, do, fair bit. What, what kind of um, performance do you prefer? Do you prefer it, you know, acoustic like you've done today? You know, maybe in front of a small audience or... Um, do, do you prefer it when you've got a big band out there? Um, generally, it's a bit more fun with, with the band. Yeah. A bit less lonely? Uh, no, I don't really <laughs> mind that. I don't mind being by myself, that's fine. Um, it's kind of like a. I just like the. the, the I, like, I enjoy playing with other musicians. I think it's much more, it's more fun when you're, you're kind of responding with other people in the room with, uh, with your toys. So, yeah, I prefer, I prefer, with, prefer playing with the band, but. Uh, Playing solo is like a different, different thing. It's got its own thing. 
some challenge as well. It's a bit more intimate, isn't it? Yeah, but, yeah. But I mean, I like playing in the band as well. But I think like the more, for me, like the more I mess around with different things, that's something that keeps me interested. You know, keeps you my enthusiasm wanes as soon as I'm doing the same thing, uh, like the same sort of routine. Mm -hmm. um, so doing both is quite important for me, I think. Um, what kind of artists did you listen to that initially sparked your 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 interest um, in music and, and wanting to play the guitar? What was it that kind of drove you to want to do it? Um, well, like whenever like I listened to a lot, a lot of my dad's records when I was like, very young, so I listened to a lot, of, a hell of a lot of Kinks and, and Beatles. And, um, Stuff like that, and quite a lot of 60s music was she like. But um, at the same time, I get, get to I was 17 or 18, then um, Is This It came out, and like, like so stroke, you had strokes, white stripes, and yeah, yeah, and that was like a completely different way of, kind of, for me, especially with Is This It, it was just like I was listening to guitars in a completely different way, you know, you, you find, you find, find out about television and all that stuff. People from my generation who find out about television and all that stuff afterwards. Uh, I did. I loved it. So there was all that in Lou Reed and um, a lot of it just kind of, it all, it all start, started generally with like bands, whenever it kind of, is this it? It was like one of those albums, you know. It was like a. Um, were you playing guitar by that point? Or? Um, yeah, a bit, but like. When, when you heard that, it kind of drove you. I heard a little yeah. more after I heard that record. Yeah. Definitely. And I also like Elephant and White Stripes, that did it as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, even though they were around before that, it took them to have a massive pocket before I actually started taking notice. Have you been writing songs for a long time, as in, has it, you know, getting to this kind of level of um, songwriting, is it something that's just come fairly natural to you, or has it taken a lot of practice and trial and error? Uh, no, I'm. Um, just as good or just as bad at songwriting as I was whenever I first kind of started, which was about 16 inch, I think, mm -hmm. when I started writing embarrassing little songs, which I didn't want to show. If anything, <laughs> I just, my ego has grown, nothing else. And uh, just, um, where I used to like, like, the very idea of like telling my schoolmates that I wrote songs was just uh, like it's my dark, deep, dark secret. I might as well have been. Frustration. <laughs> no, no, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, yeah. Tell anybody. Just the stigma that yeah. you seem yeah. to get. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah. But now, humility. Humility is. Well, yeah. I just played the songs to people, but not, not really. Like, I've been writing for a while, but I don't think I've got any better, any worse. It's just like because I would write loads and many rubbish songs, and then. Then something really good will come. It's just that sometimes, like something will just come out of nowhere. Like one, one of the songs will just be really, or well, I'll like lots, and I think it's really good, and then I decide that people should hear it. Um, but it's usually the same. It's the same sort of thing. Just like writing and stuff. And it's, I enjoy it. I enjoy writing. So I love writing crap songs, it's just as much as writing good songs. Is is there one song that you didn't write that you wish you had? Yeah, loads. Uh, at the moment, uh, I don't know, the Kanye West song um, on the latest but album. What, the Love Lockdown one? or? Uh, I love that. I did a, Actually, I, I love that. I wasn't thinking of that one. I did a cover of that. Really it, cover it, of that. It's a really kind of subtle song, isn't it? Amazing song. Yeah. But, um, no, there was, uh, there was another one on the album called See You in My Nightmares. Mm -hmm. It almost sounds like a Tom Waits song. Um, but also, like, there's a folk song, there's a few folk songs I wish I'd written. I wish I'd written Rainy Night in Soho. That's, um, that's an absolutely majestic song. Loads. Yeah. Um, finally, just to keep your label happy, what are you promoting? Um, <laughs> for the people that can't see, uh, we have a, a PR rep from Domino here with us today. You know, you're laughing in the background. Uh, what are you pimping right now? <laughs> yeah. huh? What are you pimping right now? Uh, what, what, my, my, my single, you mean? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah buy the single. 
Tell us about it. Uh, it's fun. It's, 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 um, it's a great song. It's, uh, it's, it's probably the best song you'll, you, you'll ever hear in your life. And, you know, don't buy it. Don't buy it just once. Buy it a few times. Because it, it sounds better than one time you buy it. And, uh, yeah. All, yeah, all proceeds of which go, go to me. Which is a good cause. Probably not. I haven't probably, I've probably come across a very. I haven't, probably haven't come across a very endearing interview. So <laughs> don't buy it. Don't, don't encourage me. Yeah, okay. Bonds. Thank you.